Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, markets have been dumping the moment we got the new CPI inflation numbers, which came in worse than expected. So in just a moment, I'll be talking more about that and what we can now expect from next week's Fed meeting and how that can affect markets. And also, there's only one day to go until the Ethereum merge, which is one of the biggest events in crypto history. And I'll talk more about that later in the video alongside the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts as always. So make sure you watch this entire video all the way to the end to not miss out on any of this important information. First of all, we need to talk about the new CPI inflation numbers that were recently released over the last one day. And as I said in the intro of this video, and also in real time, the moments the numbers were released over on my Twitter, these numbers came in worse than expected because according to consensus and the trading economics forecast, the majority were expecting around an 8.1% year over year inflation rate with the new CPI numbers. But instead of an 8.1% year over year inflation rate, we got an 8.3% percent year over year inflation rate and that 0.2 percent difference is actually a big deal and obviously for those of you who watched my last two videos that I posted over the last two days you would know that this inflation number that we got at 8.3 percent coming in higher than expectations meant that the market is about to play out a dump because as I've been talking about for the last two days if we got 8.1 percent or lower that means the markets are about to pump but anything higher than 8.1 percent as I've been talking about for the last two days means we're about to dump. It means markets are going to go down. And in case you're new to this channel, the reason why markets were set to dump the moment we got higher than expected inflation numbers is all to do with the Federal Reserve. Because for as long as inflation remains above the Federal Reserve's target inflation rate, which is 2 to 3%, then it's the Federal Reserve's job to lower inflation back down towards 2 to 3%. And how they do that is by raising the federal funds rate, which is bad for markets and they also perform quantitative tightening, which is also bad for markets. And so basically, the more quantitative tightening the Federal Reserve does, the more bearish that is for markets, like the stock market and the crypto market, for example. And the higher the federal funds rate goes, which means the higher interest rates go, the more bearish that is for markets as well. And remember, the Federal Reserve is forced to raise rate and perform quantitative tightening while inflation is above their target rate at 2 to 3%. So if inflation comes in higher than expected like it recently did, that is bad news for markets because it means the Federal Reserve has more tightening to do or potentially has to raise rates higher than we previously expected. And in fact, right now, as I've recorded in this video, the target range for the federal funds rate is at 2.25% to 2.5%. But the majority of charts you find just look at the higher number, the 2.5% number, also known as 250 basis points. But in almost exactly one week from now, we have another another FOMC meeting, also known as a Fed meeting, where we are expected to see another rate hike, another raise in the federal funds rates. And previously, before we got the recent higher than expected inflation numbers, the expectations for next week's Fed meeting was either a 50 basis point hike or a 75 basis point hike, which means increasing the federal funds rate by half a percent or three quarters of a percent at next week's Fed meeting. But that was before we got the recent higher than expected inflation numbers. And so, now that inflation has come in a little higher than expected, markets have had to price in a little more pain than we previously expected because now after the recent CPI inflation numbers, the expectations for next week's Fed meeting have changed. And so as of right now, the chance of only a 50 basis point hike at next week's Fed meeting is completely off the cards. And instead, the minimum rate hike that everyone is now expecting for next week's Fed meeting is a 75 basis point hike, also known as raising the federal funds rate by 0.75%. But even though markets are fully pricing in a 75 basis point hike happening next week, markets are also pricing in a 38% chance of a 100 basis point hike, which means raising the federal funds rate by one full percentage point. So that of course means the market is pricing in a 62% chance of a 75 basis point hike at next week's Fed meeting. But because the options are between 75 basis points and 100 basis points, 
100% of the market is pricing in a minimum of 75 basis points because those who are not pricing in a 75 basis point hike at next week's Fed meeting are pricing in a 100 basis point hike. So what all of this actually means for markets is that when it comes time for next week's Fed meeting in almost exactly one week from now, if the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates by 100 basis points, that would be the bearish scenario. That would mean that we would see another major crash on that day because once again, the majority are actually expecting a 75 basis point hike. So in that scenario, if we actually see a 100 basis point hike next week, all of those market participants who are only pricing in a 75 basis point hike would then immediately have to price in that 100 basis point hike on that day as soon as that happens, which means they have to price in more pain to markets, which means the market dumps on that day if we see the 100 basis point hike. But on the flip side, if the Federal Reserve hikes rate by 75 basis points at next week's Fed meeting, that would actually be the bullish scenario because once again, 100% of the market has priced in a 75 basis point hike at least happening with the market pricing in a 38% chance of a 100 basis point hike, which means if we only see a 75 basis point hike next week, all of those market participants who were pricing in more pain than what we should have been expecting would essentially have to jump ship to the other side as soon as that rate hike happens. And that would mean that these Wall Street investors would have to rebalance their portfolios to only accommodate the lower rate hike out of the two options. And in case you don't already know, these numbers right here aren't just any random numbers. They are actually futures contracts that show us what has actually been priced into markets. And so that is why markets dumped the moment inflation came in worse than expected, because as soon as that happened, markets had to price in more pain than previously expected at next week's Fed meeting. And so once again, at least as of right now, a 75 basis point hike next week would be considered bullish and a 100 basis point hike next week would be considered bearish. And that's not just my opinion. That is literally the data and what the numbers say. And just before I jump into the charts, I'll quickly share this important information right here, which basically shows us what the futures market is currently pricing in for the next one year worth of Fed meetings. And so just looking off what the majority is pricing into the market, the majority is pricing in once again, a 75 basis point hike happening at next week's Fed meeting. And then in the November Fed meeting, the majority majority is pricing in another 75 basis point hike at that Fed meeting, which would take the federal funds rate all the way up to 4% at the November Fed meeting. And then in the December Fed meeting, the majority in the market is expecting a 50 basis point hike at that Fed meeting, which would take rates up to 4.5%. And then after the December Fed meeting, the majority in the market is currently pricing in for the federal funds rate to remain the same after the final rate hike at the December Fed meeting. And then the market is actually pricing in the Fed pivot point to happen sometime in the middle of next year. The middle of 2023 is when the market is expecting the Federal Reserve to potentially begin dropping interest rates again sometime in the middle of next year. But obviously, depending on what happens to CPI inflation between now and then, there can be a lot of change in these future probabilities. But anyway, jumping into the charts, starting off with the US stock market, this right here is the NASDAQ 100 index on the daily time frame. And obviously, over the last one day, we've seen a lot of bearish price action in the stock market as a result of the worse than expected inflation numbers. And so right now, the NASDAQ 100 index has closed the recent trading day right back down towards that golden pocket level of support, which is sitting at roughly around 11.9K to 12,000 in the NASDAQ 100 index. And obviously, if you're a regular viewer on this channel, you'll know that that golden pocket level of support is an important level of support for the NASDAQ, which basically means if the NASDAQ breaks below that level, that obviously means another leg to the downside for the NASDAQ, which would also potentially mean another leg to the downside for crypto because crypto and tech stocks are heavily correlated. But anyway, speaking of crypto, getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the daily Bitcoin chart. And technically speaking, we still have that bullish divergence, but obviously Bitcoin was affected by the worse than expected inflation numbers, as I talked about for the last few days. And so due to that, looking at the daily Bitcoin MACD, we've obviously lost a lot of that bullish momentum in the daily Bitcoin. MACD, but we haven't yet seen a bearish cross on this time frame. And so technically speaking, on the daily time frame, when we're talking about these sort of trends, these multi-week long trends, as of right now, based on the MACD still sitting in the green and the RSI and the price action still technically forming higher lows and higher highs, technically speaking, the trend on the daily time frame is still more bullish than bearish at the moment, unless we start to see some more
more bearish confirmation signals on this time frame, such as a bearish cross in the MACD or the RSI or the price action forming lower highs and lower lows. But at least as of right now on the daily time frame, so far this move does look somewhat similar to one of these types of moves. Unless of course we see some bearish confirmation this time around, like what we didn't see back then. We never saw a bearish cross throughout that uptrend. But anyway, just before we talk about the short term for Bitcoin, zooming out to the three day Bitcoin chart, taking a look at the three day Bitcoin RSI, obviously the RSI has failed that initial breakout, which is what I said would happen in my last video if we got inflation coming in higher than 8.1%. So for now, when it comes to this massive descending line of resistance in the three day Bitcoin RSI, we just need to remain patient. But technically speaking, despite the dump in the price of Bitcoin over the last one day, that has not yet invalidated this bullish divergence on the three day Bitcoin chart. This is technically still valid. But I want to make it clear that when I'm talking about the three day Bitcoin chart, this is not talking about short term Bitcoin price action. This is talking about the multi month long moves. And so if you want to know about the short term, as in what could happen over the next couple of days, then we need to look at some smaller timeframes like the four hour Bitcoin chart. And what we could see here on the four hour Bitcoin chart is obviously a perfect rejection from that exact golden pocket level of resistance, which was sitting at around 22.7k to 22.8k. And on top of the price action running into that heavy resistance, we also had the RSI well into overbought territories, which was also flashing a shorter term bearish divergence, telling us that we were losing some of that short term bullish momentum. And so like I've been saying in my videos just over the last few days, we were due to see some sort of short term cool off. But obviously that was accelerated by the bad inflation numbers. And now usually after we experience a move like this, where the price pretty much goes almost straight to the downside, we actually have some time in the short term for the price action to basically stabilize, which means the most likely scenario in the short term based on history is most likely going to be some choppy sideways price action in the coming hours, maybe over the next day or so. And this is also because the price of Bitcoin has run into a bit of short term support recently, which is this previous Fibonacci level of resistance. But if we redraw our Fibonacci retracement tool from this swing low up to this swing high, we have the golden pocket level of support sitting at around 20,000, almost exactly 20,000. And so far as of recording this video, the price of Bitcoin has found some short term support at around that level. So once again, just in the immediate short term, talking about the coming hours, maybe the next day or so, I am expecting a bit of choppy sideways price action. And in case you're wondering about other levels of support and resistance, we have some short term resistance at around 20.7k. And above that, I would expect some resistance around here sitting at around 21.1k. But if the price of Bitcoin confirms a break below the golden pocket, below 20k in the short term, obviously that would be a bearish signal telling us that we're due to see a drop in the Bitcoin price down to at least the 78.6% Fibonacci level at around 19.4 to 19.5k. But below that level and the next support for the price of Bitcoin to the downside would be at the local low at 18 and a half thousand. And it's also important to keep an eye on the price oscillators in the short term. Obviously, the MACD is showing a lot of short term bearish momentum as we were losing some of that bullish momentum over the last few days, as I've been talking about for the last few days. But if you're looking at the four hour Bitcoin RSI, this is getting close to oversold territories, which basically means the Bitcoin price has gone to the downside too far, too fast and needs some time to help reset the RSI, which usually plays out as some choppy sideways price action just in the short term. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, starting off with the Ethereum merge, which is set to happen in a little over one day from now. And if you're an ETH holder, or if you want to buy ETH, then I strongly recommend you doing more research into the merge and understanding what it actually is. But basically, the biggest change that happens with the merge is essentially Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake, which means after the merge, you can no longer mine Ethereum with mining hardware, and instead you can stake on Ethereum. So essentially, if you hold 32 ETH, you can stake that ETH yourself and essentially earn passive income. Or if you don't have that much invested in ETH, you can actually stake ETH in a staking pool on an exchange, for example. And when Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake with the merge happening tomorrow, that will also drastically bring down Ethereum's electricity consumption, because obviously proof of work does consume more electricity electricity than proof of stake, because with proof of work, you're securing the blockchain with computing power, but with proof of stake, you're securing the blockchain with essentially money. And so if you try to attack the blockchain in some way by approving a fraudulent transaction, for example, then with proof of stake, you basically get slashed. You lose some of your staked ETH. Whereas with proof of work, you basically have no chance of attacking the 
a network like that unless you have more than half of the entire network's computing power. And if you're wondering if the merge is bullish or bearish for ETH, well, over the long term, it is extremely bullish for ETH. It's kind of like a triple Bitcoin halving. But keep in mind, that is over the long term, as in what could happen over the coming years. And if you're wondering what could happen in the short term at the Ethereum merge, well, that could be quite unpredictable because, for example, if there's a major error with the merge, then we could see a lot of bearish price action for Ethereum. But on the other hand, if the merge happens successfully, then that could trigger a pump in the price of ETH because maybe there's people sitting on the sidelines waiting to enter ETH after the merge. But on the other hand, considering the massive amounts of hype building up to the merge, this could also act as a sell the news event. So in the short term, it could be quite unpredictable, but it's very likely to bring about a lot more volatility in the price of ETH when the merge happens tomorrow. So let's just say I would be very careful being in any high leverage positions for Ethereum at the moment going into the merge, because considering there could be a lot of volatility around Ethereum over the next one day, we could likely see a lot of liquidations in over leveraged positions. But anyway, heading into the Ethereum chart, this right here is the four hour Ethereum chart. And right now, after the dump, obviously, which came just after we got those bad inflation numbers, just like Bitcoin, the price of ETH is finding some short term support at this previous Fibonacci level, which is sitting at around 1560 approximately. And we also previously found support back here at around that same price level. And if you're looking at the four hour price oscillators, first of all, the RSI is getting close to oversold territories, which means we're potentially going to need some time to help reset the RSI, which usually plays out as some choppy sideways price action in the shorter term. And looking at the four hour Ethereum MACD, we are still seeing short term bearish momentum as I talked about yesterday, which basically means we're still technically within this short term pullback as I spoke about yesterday. And even though the most likely scenario in the short term is most likely going to be some choppy sideways price action, we haven't yet confirmed another bullish flip out of this short term pullback into a continuation of this bullish trend, which technically hasn't yet broken because technically speaking, we're still forming higher highs in the short term and higher lows, at least as of right now. And just like the four hour Bitcoin chart, if we redraw this Fibonacci retracement tool from the swing low up to the swing high to get our Fibonacci levels of support, we can see that the price of ETH has recently run into the golden pocket level of support, which once again is sitting at around 1550 to 1560. And as for some short term support and resistance, if we see a bit more of a bounce from the golden pocket, we could see some resistance right here at around 1650 approximately. And if we break below the golden pocket, obviously that will be a short term bearish signal. And in that case, I would expect a drop down to at least the 78.6% Fibonacci level, which is sitting at almost exactly 1.5k and anything below that level. And I would expect a drop down towards the local low at around 1420. But whether Ethereum continues continues this dump or continues this bullish trend. Either way, you can maximize your profits in crypto by checking out these videos popping up right here on your screen. Because the video popping up in the top left of your screen shows you how to make money if the price is going either up or down. And the video in the bottom left of your screen shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.